Hi everyone, today we're working on a Reno Cynic and the fault we are dealing with it is a charging fault so I'm gonna show it to you now so I'm gonna start the engine and you can see there airbag ignore that and if you wait a bit more you, you will see this warning low battery and stop sign which says stop the engine and today we're gonna deal with the low battery fault because this is the most uh, important one at this point and later on we will also deal with the airbag issue but at this, at this point this is the fault we're dealing with and we're gonna start uh, our diagnosis under the bonnet in the engine bay we're gonna make sure our connector Battery terminals are nice and tight, positive and negative. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, explain you a bit how this system charge is working. And this particular model, it is an electronic controlled alternator. It's, a, it's working on two wires. One wire, it is feedback coming from the alternator back to the control unit and the other one it is the <clears throat> request sent by the control unit for the alternator okay now to check the integrity of the alternator wires the control wire and the feedback wire and you can see on my scope the yellow probe just like there which is the control wire you can see we've got the PW signal sent by the control module and the feedback coming from the alternator. Since the engine is not running, you're going to have a very low voltage, which now is 1.19 volts. I'm going to disconnect the connector while you're going to watch the scope, and both voltages should go up to the battery voltage. So I'm going to do that now for you, so you can see it. As you can see, 11.93, 12.05, once I plug it back in, it's going to come back to the same as. So, now that we've tested the wiring and we know the voltage coming from the control unit on both wires, we're ready to start the engine. You're running. Surprise, surprise. Now it's working. So apparently we've got an intermittent fault. And now we need to find out why is that. This, I just disconnected the sensor from. We're back in. This is drop down to zero volts on the channel one. So this is our voltage charging, which is all right. Again. Let's see if we can rev the car, we can make it fault again. Apparently, we're just fine for now. And this is the AC ripple test. And we're gonna reset it to zero. And you can see it's gone 
more than zero, more than uh, one volt on the lower side and almost one volt on the top side. So let's go on two volt scale. And now you can see 1.47, 0.7. Even more than two volts again. Let's go on five volt scale. Five volt scale. And let's see, two point six. Even more than five volt wind. Let's go on a ten volt scale. And we'll reset. Oh, three volts. One nine. So all these spikes. Even more than that. Wow. We're going on a 20 volt scale. We'll reset. So I was expecting. 0.3, no more than that, on both sides of the signal wave. Well, minus 14 volts spikes, minus 17. Yeah, so definitely I'm gonna change this alternator because this is why sometimes it just doesn't charge. I think this spikes just shuts off the control module so yeah definitely gonna change it I've got the alternator replaced it's already dark outside and um, the car has been running for the last I mean 10 15 minutes and this is how my scope looks like so I only got 0 0.4 on both so it's equal uh, s sine wave this is a refurbished alternator. I honestly expect it to be below 0.3, but let's see there, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, almost 0 0.5 on there. But definitely much more better than the minus 14 volt spike. And now I have back, back probe, control wire, and the feedback wire, and let's see how the signal looks like. A big difference okay so that concludes our video for today I hope found this video useful guys thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video